the work that I've been making in the past five years, I would say, is predominantly interested in the idea of leisure. And through um, the process of thinking and making, uh, that has come to make me think a lot about time and value, um, especially with the act of weaving, which is a very time-consuming act uh, or a slow act. And doing so, uh, it's forcing me to constantly be measuring time, which has been really interesting because uh, as my work is also based in storytelling, I'm finding that uh, I can have a greater idea, which is the, the, the bigger picture in a sense. But as I work my way up the loom, uh, each line is its own sentence, building a completely different story that is more of a time-based, almost like a journal in a sense. And it all comes together to build a larger picture. As storytelling is quite important in my work, titles tend to give more context or kind of uh, build a narrative that may give the viewer a chance to see the work from a different point of view or to have a conflicting title in a sense so that we can kind of be more aware of the actual nuance that is being portrayed inside the work. And so when I'm titling things, uh, let's say one of the pieces, uh, what's your net worth? Um, which is something that we hear a lot now with uh, overall very extremely wealthy people. And they're kind of asking each other what, not just how much money they have in their bank accounts, but what everything that they own is worth all put together, which is kind of an insane idea to me. And so I was making uh, a tapestry that uh, I was thinking and was on the coastline and I was thinking uh, about a fishing village and I incorporated an actual net that I made into the painting. And then I was thinking about what if I was asking the fisherman what his net was worth. And so it's kind of this thing where it's bringing in um, words that we could call like buzzwords or things like that, that were that we see becoming new terminologies in a sense, new terms that are emerging uh, because of the way that we are living our lives today and kind of taking them out of context a little bit to actually make us think about what we're saying when we're saying it. Um, and with this piece behind me, uh, which is leisure as a form of resistance. Um, for me, I really believe in that. I really believe that we are being asked to be overproductive and we are uh, being often overworked or overworking ourselves. And it's interesting to me because as I am making work that is quite uh, time consuming, which is quite labor intensive. I'm always thinking about leisure while doing it. And there's something about it that is a bit different because this is my choice. And, and we we're always living with conflict within ourselves. We are because we are nuanced, we are uh, multiple. And um, this is how I work those kinds of things into my work. The title and the piece often are not the same thing, and yet they can be in conversation with one another. And what I like about making work is about making something and then thinking about how it can be in conversation with the world that we live in, the art world, um, the social uh, construct that we're all a part of. In the work that I make, I tend to use uh, abstracted figures. Um, and yet, what I'm trying to do with them is uh, show a lot of personality. And that is, to me, through, um, I call it self-representation. Although, 
not in the way that it's a self-portrait, but in the way that we present and represent ourselves, in the way that we hold ourselves in the actions that uh, we take, and that um, we are constantly evolving and changing maybe the way that we look. And at the same time, we're not as able to change our body language or to change maybe the ways that we stand to be comfortable. And so that ties in again into leisure because um, the way that we hold ourselves is often a way to find comfort. And the way that we move is often, in my opinion, to be to become comfortable again because we pick a position that is comfortable at the time and eventually our muscles will tense up and we get a bit tired and so we go maybe in an opposite position or a different lean and that allows us to get relief and find comfort again and i think that that's not only relevant for our body but also for how we lead our lives and um, the people that we decide to interact with. Uh, so that's all, to me, self-representation. So one of the latest things that I've been experimenting with in weaving is trying to find a way to make it m a little bit more like painting. Uh, and what I mean by that is that weaving is a very linear process. You start at the bottom and you make your way up to the top. Whereas to me, painting has always been something where I am working all over uh, a surface and finding ways to uh, make bridges between different shapes and working with contrast and color and deciding things uh, as I go. So what I've started to do is use the warp thread as the canvas and finding a way to uh, build shapes while having enough structure for the whole thing not to fall apart when I take it off the loom. And so I, I will put separate shapes in different places and then start to connect them all together, having a bit less of a plan and uh, it being a little bit more organic. And at the same time, uh, I get to play a lot more with transparency, which is something that I've always played with in painting as well. Uh, and layering. Uh, so this has been a really exciting thing that uh, I think there'll be more of in the future. When I'm making pastel works, uh, I'm often, I'm always thinking about color and uh, how I can use colors to um, be in contrast with one another, how I can use colors to tell a story, to build shapes and also how I can layer them and in, for me the act of layering has always been an important thing and it's always been interesting because I will often almost finish a painting to an extent where the composition is all laid out and uh, things make sense and everything is quite relational at least color wise and then I will put another layer on top uh, and kind of uh, clarify some things with it, uh, hide others, and then with the act of scraping or taking away some of the paint, then I get to show the layers that may be hidden now by uh, what's on top. And to me, that's interesting both visually and uh, maybe philosophically in the way that, uh, again, with representation, what we show, what's underneath, when we decide to show what's underneath and how we do it. For me, the act of making work is something uh, quite instinctive. And what I mean by that is that I instinctively always want to be making and creating things. And I don't necessarily know uh, what those things are going to be and how uh, they will all come together. But it's always the catalyst for me uh, to 
start a new project and then while I'm making the project to really think in depth about what I'm trying to talk about and how I want the work to tell the story that I'm trying to tell. Together Atlas is inspired by one of the tapestries that I made uh, titled Together at Last Alone Again. And uh, the title is actually Together Atlas and in brackets the T. And the reason why Atlas is because the work to me represents uh, the Atlas Mountains, which is where um, some of my ancestors would have lived uh, maybe not more than a hundred years ago. Uh, and it's a place that I have very little connection to, but that I'm very attracted by. And so the idea of togetherness is maybe me together with those mountains. It's also the idea of the mountains being forever apart, but coming together in the valleys.